Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 883. I've got the white pieces and started off with e4. My opponent went uh, c5. And we go for a, um, well, he goes for an accelerated dragon. I play the normal moves. He goes with uh, knight c6. And, uh, you know, avoiding avoiding moving the d-pawn. One of the ideas with the accelerated dragon is maybe you can get in this move uh, d2 to, or d7 to d5 in one go. So he's not touching that pawn. I'm going for the open Sicilian here, so that allows him to continue his setup. So he could continue with e6 here, uh, knight f6, or g6. Those are like the top three choices, or e5, the Kalashnikov. Um, and he chose g6, so this is an accelerated dragon. And you don't have to play the Meroxy bind against the accelerated dragon. It's just... Uh, one of the principal ways of playing against it. And I started playing this um, just because I had read it was like the most principled way to uh, <coughs> to play against it. And I always had trouble against the Accelerated Dragon, so I, I just started playing this. And then I saw um, Chess Explained. I started watching his channel, and he always played that. So, so I've kind of settled on this as my response to the Accelerated Dragon. But the other line is just as good. Uh, you can just develop with the knight and just go for peace play instead of this... Uh, kind of positional clamp on the center. Okay, but c4, he goes bishop g7, hitting my knight. And then I drop my knight back to c2. You can see that is an idea here. It's the second choice. The main move by far is a bishop e3, and we could let's just show a normal kind of position for a Meroxy bind. Uh, be something like this. Um, black can castle, and I go bishop e2. Yeah, pretty typical kind of setup, and then black goes uh, d6. I wanted to get to this pawn structure. Eventually, black realizes that he's not going to get in the uh, d5 break when you've got these pawns here. That's that's the advantage of, of putting both pawns forward uh, combined with the knight on c3. Uh, that, that break, or the, the pawn is just not going to d5. You, you've got that restrained. And, um, and so many pos games have been played from this position, and it's uh, certainly playable for black as well as uh, as white, but uh, anyway, this is the kind of position I was trying to learn, and I've gotten, I think, okay at it. Let's go back to the game. Um, but I was experimenting with another idea. I saw that uh, Chess Explained would often play this uh, knight c2 move. I didn't know, actually, if, that if, if it was a move in this exact position. So you can see it's in there. Uh, not the top choice, but it is has been played uh, by some top players. Um, and the idea behind it, I think, as I explained in the live commentary, is just to keep as much material on the board. If you have the knight here and the bishop here, uh, black always has the opportunity to trade them off, uh, and that maybe eases his, uh, his any kind of congestion he may have in his position, because black has a little less space. Uh, and then a normal move here after knight c2 would be either to play knight to f6 or to d6, and those, both those moves probably will be played in some order in most games. Uh, and you get the same kind of uh, structure from black. But black has a different idea here. Um, he went e6. And we're just out of the book. And, um, you know, by a strange coincidence, actually, I had someone play this against me in an over-the-board game yesterday. And so I was wondering, oh, maybe there's some uh, new video out about a new system in the Accelerated Dragon, or maybe a Grandmaster has been promoting the system. But... Uh, but he told me after the game that there was just something he came up with. Uh, you know, his idea was to uh, put the knight here, um, get in the move uh, d5 if possible, but uh, if not possible, actually to break with uh, f5. So, so typically it's not possible. So the main idea is really uh, knight here and pawn to f5, and uh, that's the way he played it in the game. It's kind of interesting. I think black is worse. But um, but I think it is a playable option, <laughs> as as peculiar as it seems. Uh, I don't think Black played it particularly well in this game, however. So we'll we'll go to some of his mistakes. But uh, e6, although it looks like a weird move, maybe should not be dismissed out of hand. Anyway, I continue normal development with knight c3. He goes knight e7. One point I've made in the video, I just want to illustrate it here, is um, it's, it's not usually good for Black to take. And, uh, and give up the bishop pair in exchange for uh, damaging my pawns like this. In fact, the chess engine gives this line, queen a5 coming out and uh, hitting the c3 pawn, <laughs> rook b1, ignoring the threat, actually leaving two pawns hanging, the a pawn and the c3 pawn. Uh, queen takes, bishop here, queen runs back to the king side, bishop b2, 
And at this point, even though white is a pawn down, that the chess engine is giving a significant advantage to white. Um, black has lost the dark squared bishop. Black has dark squared weaknesses. Uh, black has, or white, white has his pieces out and ready to start playing an active role in the game. And um, black's going to have trouble developing this bishop and this knight. Uh, you know, it can be developed without too much trouble. But uh, uh, anyway, it's, it seems like this position is an edge for white, even though white is down a pawn. So that, that's something. Uh, but uh, of course, he didn't play that way. He went knight to e7, bishop e2. He went a6. Uh, it's a little bit slow. He could have uh, already gone f5, I think, or castles in f5. But anyway, let's get to that position. I'll show that move in a little bit. He castled. Um, went bishop e3. He went d6. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the problem with this e6 setup is that your d pawn is always going to be either backwards or weak as long as uh, white is careful and continues to keep a clamp on the d5. And it seems like there was no time that in this game that black had an opportunity to play d5. So that's, if you've got white and black is playing this way against you, um, that's the thing to keep an eye on is make sure you've got control of that uh, d5 square. Uh, let's see, I went uh, rook c1, and here he went bishop d7, which is just a blunder. Um, that leaves the d-pawn hanging, and I should just take it. It's kind of silly, I didn't I didn't take it, and it was kind of silly of him to, to hang that pawn. Um, f5 right here is the top choice of the chess engine and so this is kind of uh, you know maybe one of the justifications of the system if you can break with f5 open things up a little bit if i take maybe you take back with the the d pawn and give this bishop a square to come out to on uh, or take back with the e pawn and the bishop can come out to e6 um black is still going to be left with a backwards d pawn so but he can maybe go for some counterplay on the king side um, I think white is better, but uh, maybe playable for black. But, uh, well, bishop d7 is certainly a blunder, and my move queen d2 is also a blunder. I was thinking about this uh, battery here, I guess, and just neglecting the uh, undefended pawn. Anyway, we continue for a few moves. And he goes queen a5. And knight d4, this was turned out to be correct. Actually, white still has an advantage uh, through all of this, even though... Uh, even though I could have had a bigger advantage. Uh, and here he does get to trade off some pieces finally. So I don't know if that knight c2 maneuver was all that useful, but but I did uh, get the bishop here. And uh, getting rid of that dark squared bishop is an achievement, and this pawn is still weak. So white is still better here. Let's see, he went bishop c6, looking at my uh, e pawn, and I went uh, rook f to d1. Uh, here, once again, I could have taken this pawn. I think at this point during the game, I, I really thought about it for a bit. Uh, and I was worried about him bringing a rook over to chase my queen away. But of course, <laughs> hitting his knight here. So actually, he has to play the move rook to uh, e8 to defend his knight. And uh, and my queen can come back into the game uh, at her own pace here. So it seems like this is uh, just fine for uh, white. And I should have uh, grabbed the pawn once again. Anyway, I went rook fd1. He went uh, rook f d8. So now it's defended. Drop the queen back to e3, getting out of the sight of that rook. He goes king g7. Went uh, rook d2. I was preparing to double here and also, well, I'm thinking maybe I want to move that uh, knight and want to keep the a pawn defended here. Uh, let's see. He went rook d7. So we're both doubling on the uh, d file. And um, I'm still keeping a clamp on that d5 square, so he's still not getting that push in. Um, let's see, he went, um, oh yes, he just played there. So I went bishop to f3 here, shoring up my e-pawn. I was just preparing to move some of my pieces around. I didn't want that to get caught by surprise or to allow a, um, a d5 push here. So how many pieces have we got lined up? He's got four pieces, two ricks, the bishop, and the knight, and I have four pieces, two ricks, the bishop, and the knight, but I also have the two pawns. He's got the queen, but it seems like there was never any great opportunity to push d5, and f5 here was, was, uh, uh, one of the chess engine suggestions. So that's a reasonable way to play. And I wasn't quite sure how to respond. I think the, the top way to respond was actually g3. Although the chess engine had a bunch of different ideas here. So it seems like white keeps some kind of edge here. g3 just to stop him from pushing on to f4. So that's an interesting idea. Taking was also one of the things uh, the chess engine considered. You know, I, I didn't think this was so great. But, uh, you know, he can trade off my bishop. But apparently there's still some edge to... Uh, 
some edge to white here. Uh, I went with knight e2. This is not as good as either of those other two moves, actually. He goes e5, and then I went uh, queen d3. So getting out of the way of that uh, pawn push in case he wanted to push on, but he took. And that was actually uh, one of the top engine choices, so it seems like these exchanges were reasonable. Although, uh, instead of uh, bishop e3, let's back up. There was a suggestion here, instead of, I mean, instead of bishop takes e4, uh, pushing on with d5. This is a very interesting way, and it seems like black can equalize with this maneuver. So this is something he should think about. Um, I would take here, and uh, after knight d5, maybe just move the queen out of the way. And I would be happy with this position, but the chess engine says that blank is equal. I mean, I think I have something to play for here in this isolated pawn. And there may be some weaknesses along this diagonal when that uh, pawn gets undermined. You know, if I can't outright win it, I can undermine it with a move like uh, f4, perhaps. So I would not be unhappy playing this position, but the chess engine point of view says that's, that's a way for black to equalize. Um, so it prefers that to the exchange. Let's see, he played knight c6 and went uh, queen g4. So he's moved all his pieces over to the queen side and said, well, why not, why not focus on the king side a bit? And, um, and this is where um, black starts to make some mistakes. I mean, I think, uh, you know, he played a bit of an unusual opening and you're always taking risks when you do that. And he did uh, hang the deep on, which I failed to take advantage of that. But aside from that, uh, it's actually been a pretty clean game. Uh, but h5 is a real weakening move. Always be wary of those uh, pawn pushes around the king. Once again, uh, d5 is the suggested uh, move from the chess engine. And uh, funny enough, the, the chess engine does not want to take. It wants to bring the knight around. Well, bringing the knight in makes a lot of sense, but I probably would have taken first. Um, and and then um, the, I guess the problem with taking, uh, to play uh, and to try and explain the chess engine's point of view here, the problem with taking is that uh, black's pieces either get activated or they get uh, traded off and uh, I don't have as many pieces left to attack as king so if I just ignore d5 and start start bringing my pieces onto the attack that's probably the stronger the stronger move there anyway that's that's the way to respond to d5 he went h5 and uh, it took me a while I almost just moved my queen back but actually this is the best move just coming forward with the queen <laughs> I gave it an exclamation point just because uh, it's an obvious move. So hopefully you would all find that in a game. Uh, so it's not not getting an explanation an exclamation point because it's kind of an obscure move, but it is uh, the best move by far. Uh, it keeps keeps a uh, well. It's the move that gives uh, White a winning advantage or nearly winning advantage after H5. And then um, and then Black follows this up with another mistake uh, with Queen to C5. Although this I think. <laughs> Not there. That would be a mistake. <laughs> queen to c5. Uh, I think this is a logical move. He just wants to uh, bring the queen back into the game. Maybe he'll push this pawn and the queen can come back along this diagonal. You know, he's just recognized that there's something happening over here on the king side and he needs to get back over and defend. He may also be thinking of uh, maybe counterattack on the f pawn there. So, uh, you know, I think it's kind of a logical move, but it just uh, does not work in this case. And the chess engine is suggesting moves like rick to g8 or uh, rick to h8. Um, defending this pawn. So just, just uh, reinforcing the king side a little bit with the rooks. Um, also, I think bringing the knight over was an option too. Uh, anyway, queen c5. And after the move uh, knight to g3 that I played, there were also many other moves that, that gave a big advantage to... Uh, to white, but this is one of the top ones. And by a big advantage, I mean we're talking about a score of uh, plus five at this point. So, so white is going to win significant material some way or another, um, and there's just no way of avoiding it. He played king h7, which avoids some of the um, these moves that I was thinking of exploiting the pin. Uh, but I can move my knight to e4, and then the knight is coming in here with tempo because it's also hitting his queen. So there's just uh, no way out of this. Um, he allows knight f6 check. He went king g7. And now my next move is a mistake. Uh, you know, I really have a winning attack uh, after knight takes h5. Once again, exploiting the pin. The king moves and then not even bothering to move the knight, but uh, lifting a rook. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he just falls apart over here on the king side. So this is just a, yeah, a winning attack. So that would have been the, the simplest way to finish it off. I mean, 
I, I took the exchange here. I actually looked around for a little bit, but I uh, was somehow not not seeing stuff. But uh, this is just settling for too little. I had a much much more a much stronger position before that trade. Um, let's see. But I'm still opening up lines against this king. He's still losing. I mean, it's just uh, it's it's going to be longer now. Uh, let's see. He took. I took. He brought his rook over to the f file. And uh, I grabbed on d6, so I'm coordinating against the uh, the g6 pawn here. It's not about grabbing a pawn; it's trying to, uh, to attack attack the king. And uh, yeah, I think these moves are pretty normal. Just brought the rook back, and I'm trying to bring it in another way. He's played queen to a3. He's kind of maneuvering around, looking for things. Let's let's go forward a bit. Um, so I keep I keep a winning edge through all of this. And uh, this is okay. And uh, even this move, rook takes d4, you can certainly question. The, the best move here, according to the chess engine, would be this uh, queen takes b7 check. But, um, you know, there's always these uh, worries about knight here and queen here with checkmates, or knight here and uh, queen over here with checkmate. Uh, you know, it's a dangerous position uh, with the knight on. And so I just simplified it. And at this point, I was short on time. So this is, this is a time and blitz decision, which I think is... A reasonable decision. I still have a winning position after this. I just had to be um, sure that I was there wasn't a perpetual check, um, but there wasn't here. And uh, after a few checks, I'm able to bring my queen around and defend. And uh, and I can even force a queen trade after that check, and then I have an easily winning uh, king and pawn endgame. So I just uh, get a passed pawn over on one side, and when he goes for it, I create a passed pawn on the other side. And that's where he resigned. So anyway, a very interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you again soon. Bye.